in the secondary. And that should help them out today because Wichita State is going to try and pass the ball to move it. They'll set it up with the run, but they hope to move quite a bit through the air. That could be tough because the Cats do have experience, and in football there is no substitute for having a few games under your belt. Defensively, Wichita State appears to be perhaps their biggest area of question mark. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the secondary adapts to this uh, now pro style of uh, passing game for Kansas State. We're expecting a very good ball game between two teams that should be very much improved, and it's all coming up right here next on the Kansas Broadcasting System. Saturday afternoon to you all from Manhattan, Kansas, where today Wichita State taking the field, even as we speak, are taking on the Wildcats from Kansas State University. Hello again, everybody. I'm Bruce Hurdle, joined in the booth of this year, all season long, by our new guy on the Kansas Broadcasting System, Kerry Addington. And Kerry, we were talking about it on the way up, and it has certainly manifested itself already in the early going here. It's great to be back in the college football swing of things. There's a certain attitude, a certain atmosphere that is singular to college football. That's very true, Bruce, and especially coming into a season opener everybody has a lot of enthusiasm last year of course Wichita State finishing two and nine in their first year under Ron Chismar but coming into this game and as we've seen the uh, Shockers warm up on the field before the game they're fired up and there's no reason not to be it's a brand new year it's a new ball game they haven't lost anything yet so there's absolutely no reason uh, to think that they're not going to come in and play well here today and we hope they do as you saw Wichita State won the toss they will defend the north goal and receive the football the win will be a factor you've got to think here Kerry if, particularly in the early going for a pass minded Kansas State offense a team with behind Randy Williams that figures to go much more to the air this year they will be with the wind and kicking off they won the toss they decided to go with the wind here it will be a factor yeah it really will uh, the winds right now are out of the south or uh, out of the right side of the stadium as we look at it the wind will be blowing rather from right to left they're at 10 gusting to about 17 miles an hour however this stadium Wildcat Stadium is kind of down in a bowl it's below ground level the winds tend to swirl a little bit you can't really look up at the flags around the stadium and and get a good gauge for which way the winds actually going so as you mentioned Bruce uh, the air game could be a little exciting we might see a ball or two hang up there today Wichita State coming into the season looking for improvement from a 2-9 record of a year ago. Of course, they did receive one win via the forfeit of Nevada Las Vegas, but Ron Chismar will take the two wins that he got and try to improve on that from a year ago. Kansas State 3-7-1. and one. They're expecting good things from this defense at Kansas State, and we'll have a chance to see both teams' strengths right off the bat as K-State is set to kick off. Glad to have you along. Danny Helmer will do the kicking for K-State. Back deep to receive it. Velasco Smith and Eric Denson deep at the goal line. We're ready to go. A crowd of an excess of 30,000 as the ball is in the air and heading towards the end zone. Taken six yards deep and back by Eric Denson. He'll down it and right off the bat, Wichita State will start from their own 20-yard line as they touch it off on the kickoff. A touchback. Shocks take it over first and 10. Be interesting to see how they, uh, how the Shockers can get this ground game going right off the bat. Of course, uh, that was a little bit of a problem last year, and uh, they plan to pass a little more, I would think, this year, and especially in this game. But Kansas State has a tough, tough secondary as we take a look at the Wichita State offensive lineup. They are a little bit small. They give up about 27 pounds a man to the Wildcats. Shockers come set in the eye formation. Brian McDonald calling signals. Now they split the backfield. White Eaton to the left, and that's Eric Denson trying to tackle for the first carry of the ball game, and he is met behind the line of scrimmage and racked up for a two-yard loss. David Wallace, the inside linebacker out of Vero Beach, Florida, leading the defensive surge, and the Shockers try the off-tackle. That's where they'll stay offensively pretty much as we take a look at the replay. Between the tackles, Denson had no running room here. No, he really didn't at all. Uh, Kansas State running a four-man front. Those guys up front just tied everybody up, and that gave uh, Wallace a chance to sneak through and make the stop. So a second and 12 situation faces the Shockers. They're at their own 18-yard line. Again in the I formation. Three down linemen for K-State. Drop play. Denson has running room. Mating good yardage to the 25-yard line. Stays on his feet and dives to the 26. So a pickup of eight on the play. Dave Ost, the corner out of Haven, Kansas, on the stop. But not before Eric Denson is impressive getting yardage. Anytime you see a cornerback have to come up and make a tackle, you know you've got a pretty good gain. We're going to take one more look at the play right here. McDonald gives straight through on the draw to Denson. He's got a giant hole, makes a good move, gets away from the linebacker, but he can't quite get away from David Ast. Third and four for the Shockers now. Their first key third down situation in the season. Fewen set right in the slot. Wide is Kevin Pierce, and before we get it going, the laundry comes out. 
And I think we may have had some movement on the right side of the Wichita State line. They're talking to the Kansas State coach, so uh, Kansas State captain rather on the field, and there we do have the signal. And a very key penalty early in the ball game as the Shockers look to try to gain some momentum and pick up the initial first down. Now instead of a third and four, they'll have a third and nine. The offensive line going to be so key for Wichita State as the season progresses. Along the front, going from center on out, Greg Edwards, Pat Kane, and John Pratt to your right. Jerry Quick, the pro prospect at 6'5", 280 out of Anthony, Kansas. Number 79 and big Keith Bubba Blunt out of Little Rock, Arkansas, the left guard. Shockers at a third and nine. Single running back in the backfield. They're slot right. McDonald optioning to the right, and this is going to go nowhere. Velasco Smith, the junior college transfer out of Pratt Juco, is mopped up by Les Miller, the blue chipper out of Arkansas City, Kansas, at 6'7", 266, moved real well laterally there. And the Shockers at this point are going to kick it away. David Armagost will do the duties. Well, that time as we look at the replay, uh, Smith had nowhere to go. They spread it out, tried to get K-State to spread out a little bit, came with the quick pitch. Nobody was fooled. They'll punt. Mark Wenzel deep for Kansas State. Dave Armagost to handle the punting chores for Wichita State. As they come up fruitless in their first offensive possession, Armagost hangs it up high, drives him Wenzel back to his 40-yard line, picks up a block, has a 10 yards now, 15 and 17, out across the 45-yard line into Shocker territory at the 43. So a good move by Mark Wenzel on the initial move, and Kansas State has good field position as Gerald Whitley was in on the stop. Wenzel's a uh, hometown favorite. He's out of Manhattan uh, High School, and he was a great all-around athlete there. He returned kicks and punts. He was a tremendous player, and it uh, looks as if he's going to make some things happen for the Wildcats. And taking a look here at the offensive backfield for Kansas State, Randy Williams, the quarterback, and we're getting ready for their first snap. They come from the I formation, two tight ends. Williams calling the signals out of Jacksonville, Florida. Shows play action. He is hampered. Gets the ball off, and it's incomplete. Good defensive pressure on the play. Put on by Jim Mann, who threw Williams off his passing timing there, and the ball falls incomplete. Thus, Wichita State effective in their first defensive play as we take a look at it again. Good play action from Williams in a deep drop. But they're going to need plays like this because Kansas State really has the size advantage. They average 27 pounds a man more than the Wichita State defensive front. So uh, you're going to have to have some good one-on-one -on -one plays like that. Wilson and Jordan are the men in the backfield for K-State. Wide left, they have a flanker to the right. Williams turns, wheels. Second man through is Ray Wilson, he is, or Tony Jordan, and he has stopped quickly at the line of the scrimmage. Don Weatherby on the defensive stop. I think the uh, key thing to look at right now, Bruce, as far as the Shockers are going, is a great play up front. They are fired up, and defense is always about 80% effort. You have to have talent. You have to have coaching. But uh, defense is pretty much just all-out maniac effort. And right now, the Shockers are showing us some of that. Third and 11 for Kansas State. First real passing situation for the Wildcats. Williams back. Straight drop. Looking downfield, has a man there and overthrows him. Good defensive coverage by Wichita State as they were back with six defensive backs. Mo Foxworth and Don Weatherby on the play. And so it's tit for tat on the opening series for both teams as Kansas State with good field position is held to a one yard net loss by the Wichita State defense. So a bit of a surprise on the initial series. Well, I think it's a uh, great omen for the Shockers. Of course, uh, Kansas State was uh, not a very good passing team last year. They were the worst throwing team in the Big 8 Conference. They didn't look too hot there. And uh, I think the Shockers have got it going so far on D. Fonts will be back to kick for K-State. Kick is away. Maurice Foxworth is going to let it bounce inside the 10. That's a cardinal sin, and K-State is going to get the great defensive positioning on the two-yard line. You don't like to let that ball fall inside the 10-yard line, but Maurice Foxworth took a chance, and it ended up coming back to bite the Shockers as they'll start deep in their own territory on their second possession. First and 10 on their own four. Well, that's what we talked about at the top of the game. Uh, the winds in here are a little strange. They're coming, of course, out of the south, and uh, they were kicking with the wind at that time. I think Foxworth thought that ball was just going to float on over him, but as we mentioned, the winds are swirling around. That thing hung up and uh, turned out to bounce just right for the Wildcats, so the Shockers in a deep hole at their own four. 41-yard kick for Troy Fonts as the Shockers and their second offensive position come set behind Brian McDonald at quarterback. They shift back into the eye with Eaton and Denson. 
Second man through is Eric Denson finding some running room. Jukin and Jivin as he gets his way out past the five yard line to the seven. So pick up a three on the play and the Shockers are showing some consistency initially here on the offensive front as we take a look at it again. Yeah, they're doing a good job at uh, at least standing people up and getting one on one matchups going and that's really about all you can hope for you want to tie up the man in front of you and give backs like Denson and Velasco Smith uh, a little bit of opportunity to see some holes and find out where they want to go. It's the kind of thing you're looking for at this point. Second and six for Wichita State at their own eight yard line. Denson tries it again off tackle and he finds decent running room for three yards. Very important carry for Wichita State to gain some momentum and consistency to gain some at least confidence in their offense here in the early going. They really need uh, to get a big play here pretty soon. Not necessarily a scoring play, although that would be uh, what you'd want, but they, they need to get some big pickups. Right now, they've uh, broken a couple holes up the middle. They're moving a little bit on the ground, but they need to open it up, get one good pass downfield, and, and stretch K-State's defense out a little bit. Right now, the Cats are kind of packing it up inside and waiting for them. It's a third and one situation for the Shockers. Ball just shy of the 13 yard line. About 98 degrees at game time, 65% humidity on the field. McDonald from the pro set. And we got all sorts of movement on the Shocker right side. Busting out quickly was Pat Kane. Not surprising in the early going. You got an awful lot of anxiousness over there, but that is two key five yard penalties offered by the offensive line for Wichita State that has taken them out. A first down situation here you can see Kane just firing out a little bit too quickly before the cat before the count and so the Shockers will be forced to put the ball in the air or perhaps more conservatively look for field position. Well that's the second time they've had uh, early movement on the right side and that's uh, something that uh, you expect to see in an opener you hope to have those kind of things ironed out by now but uh, they've got to cut those down if they want to get down the field. Shockers come with Denson in the slot this time single back. McDonald calling the signals. K-State playing it straight defensively. Straight drop. Has a man on the near side, and it should have been picked off up there by Don Cliggett as the pass was intended over there for Eric Denson. Cliggett made the play, and it was nearly a 6 to nothing ball game. McDonald never should have thrown it. No, he really shouldn't. He had two guys open. He had Brock Fewen down a little bit deep. He decided to go underneath. You can see Fewen there in the bottom right corner of your picture. He was wide open. McDonald never saw him, went for the short one, and was lucky it wasn't taken back home. So again, Armagost will offer it, this time from his own end zone. Wenzel at the 50-yard line to receive the kick. That shows a little respect as the wind is at his back. Armagost has been booting the ball well in the preseason, and he gets a pretty good kickoff this time as the ball hangs in the air, coming down at the 50. Wenzel takes it, slips, then gets his feet, and makes it across the 40-yard line inside the Shocker 40. So Wenzel has been the strongest offensive tool as yet for Kansas State as they'll take over at the Wichita State 39-yard line. Freddie Gaines, the converted running back, now a cornerback for Wichita State, was in on the stop as Kansas State will take it over. Opening ball game for both teams, of course, here today. As we take a look at the linebacking core for Wichita State, Weatherby, Westfield. The defensive backfield, Foxworth, Whitley, Bats Young, and Randall Cooper. Linebacking core, a big question mark for Wichita State coming in. A couple of freshmen starting for the Shockers. Big hopes for Derek Westfield in the middle. The 6'1", 215-pound freshman out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Now, this is going to be a big test, of course, for the uh, Wichita State defense early. They've looked pretty good so far, but right now, Kansas State gets to begin their drive inside the Wichita State 40-yard line, and this has got to be a good scoring opportunity for Kansas State. They want to get a couple of scores on the board here in the first quarter and uh, get this thing rolling. Defense has already been tested, and they will try their luck again as Kansas State has taken time out to talk things over. K-State on their initial down, series of downs, held to a one-yard loss. So Wichita State defensively came out fired up. And now they'll be answered to, or asked to answer the call once more. May pass it here. Williams calling the signals. Has a man in the slot left. Going from the eye formation, pitches deep. This is Jordan trying the right side, and he is going to go nowhere, stacked up at the line of scrimmage by a host of shockers showing good lateral mobility. No gain on the carry. 
And the Shockers continue to do a good job just fighting people off and moving over to the ball. We'll take a look at this again. The deep pitch, sweep right, nothing fancy. K-State has a guard pulling out front. They've got a little bit of a wall set up, but nothing doing. Good play that time by the left side of the Shocker D. Excellent flow by Kirk Weidenkiller and Darrell Whitley coming up from the safety position. So a second and ten faces the Kansas State Wildcats. Williams goes deep. Jordan, and he's going to be stopped again, this time right at the line of scrimmage by Jimmy Mann. And again, we see great, great effort by the defense. Look at them out there. They're slapping around. They're fired up. I don't think Ron Chismar could have asked for anything more. We'll take a look at it again. This time they're going to try a little bit of a crossbuck action. He starts left, goes right, and there are the guys right there to meet him. They stand him up and knock him down hard. That's what you like to see. Five or six white shirts around the football. Gang tackling, the motto for the Wichita State defense, as it is any defense. Third and ten now for Kansas State. Passing situation offered by Randy Williams. Splits his back, it's a straight drop back. Looking along the right side, has his man Jordan along the right side, but he is going to be short of a first down by a yard. Maurice Foxworth on the stop. It'll bring a fourth and one situation for Kansas State and decision time for Jim Dickey. He may just go for this one. Uh, they haven't had much luck running the ball at this point, but uh, it's early in the game, and I, I think he may just go ahead and go for this one. They really are going at Mo Foxworth. 25-51-2. and two. No secrets about it. Jim Dickey is in the pivotal year of his career here at Kansas State University. He needs success to continue on with this program. K-State going for it. They mark the ball back a little bit. It's actually a fourth and four situation. Shockers on the blitz. Bats Young is coming, and Williams is going to be racked up for a loss as the Shockers come up with the first big defensive play of the ball game. Jimmy Mann and Chris Bats Young on the safety blitz, and the Shockers have head fast for the second straight tie. Now take a look at Mann here coming from the left side. He's going to just pour right through there and see he gets right in Williams' face early. And then Bad Siong is there to uh, wrap it all up. The great, great play. You just can't ask for more right now on the D. Tremendous effort by Wichita State, turning the ball over and giving the offense their best field position of the ball game. They come set at the 42-yard line. Their half of the field, Brian McDonald again calling the signals. Eric Denson behind him along with Dwight Eaton. Kevin Pierce and Brock Fuhn, the people wide. Shows play action. McDonald back to pass, and the ball is picked off. Right across the middle, he threw it right into the coverage. And coming up to put the play was number 47, Castile. Yeah, there was no... Wayne uh, Castile. No chance on that one. We'll take a look at this again. Uh, McDonald has some time to throw, and he's going to throw it right to Castile. Well, he threw it right into coverage, Kerry. You get three purple shirts all around there. He was trying to hit Fewen at the hook point and a little beyond, but the kid out of southeast, Dwayne Castile, Wichita, Kansas a sophomore and he made the play giving the ball right back to Kansas State so the defense called on again to be unyielding they're backing him up gradually however Williams this time with one back it's the first man through that's Greg Strom and he is stopped by Kirk Allen in the middle also Mark Duncans the big guy out of Wichita 6'4 265 Kansas State, of course, coming in with a brand new offensive coordinate, coordinator this year, Al Sandoval, and he uh, says that he wants these guys to throw more. He wants them in the air about 60% of the time. We haven't seen so much of that yet, and they haven't really had much success on the ground. They're going to try and open it up here in just a minute. Well, if their lack of prowess is any indication here in the first quarter, you can see why they might want to throw the football a little bit more. Williams, <laughs> set, slot left. One single back. They had a flanker right. Straight passing situation. Now forced out of the pocket. Up and throwing the football, and knocked down on the play defensively by Wichita State's Derek Westfield. So the freshman got to hook point, red pass quickly, and knocked the play away as it was intended for Elder. We thought before the game that the Wichita State pass rush was going to be a must, and it looks like they're coming through so far. Jim Mann again coming through strong on his left side, forcing Williams to move left, and that had a lot to do with the incompletion. Williams one for four passing here in the first period, of which there's 7-13 left. No score here from Kansas State. Shockers and K-State. Williams will go from the shotgun. Two backs flank him to the right and left. Rolling to his left, it's a quick shuttle pass. This is going to gain some yardage. Jordan in across the 35-yard line. Good for a Kansas State first down. So they showed pass action on the play, and the quick shuttle pass inside was good for the first down. 
We'll take a look at it here uh, from the shotgun formation. This is a really nice play and a relatively safe play. As you'll see, there's a wide pocket here for Williams to get the ball up to his back. It looks like a pretty tricky, chancy play, but it's really a fairly safe play. And when executed correctly, you get a gain like that. So the first offensive spurt registered by K-State as they have the first down of the first first down of the ball game at the Shocker 33. Jordan again trying the right side and he's going to be stacked up, stringing out the play defensively for Wichita State. Darrell Whitley on the stop and Kirk Widenkiller, who's already been in on a couple of key plays for the Shockers, the freshman strings the play out. The Cats seem to be a little bit right-handed running at this point. They're trying to go to the right side, the left side of the Wichita State defense. So far, it's been no go. Second and eight for Kansas State. No score in the ball game. K-State has held on to the football the predominant time here in the first period. Williams calling the signals. This time gives off to Schramm. Schramm trying the right side, and he's going to get... Racked up again at the line of a scrimmage, perhaps picked up one as Donnie Weatherby, the 5'11", 200-pound senior, stacked him up again. So far in the Kansas State running attack, uh, Tony Jordan has carried the ball four times. He has picked up only one yard. And Greg Stram, the other guy who's carried the ball today, he's had two chances, only two yards. So a grand total of three yards on the ground so far for the Wildcats. The Cats were anemic on the ground last year, picking up only 2.8 yards a rush. The Shockers, very charitable, giving up 5.2 a rush. Something had to give today, and thus far, Wichita State's winning the battle. Williams back to throw, has a man deep, and it's knocked away by Darrell Whitley at the last second as they were going deep along the right side, trying to flare Jordan out there for six. But a good defensive play by Darrell Whitley in the Shocker secondary is equal to the task the first time around. A good play and a little bit of a lucky play as we'll watch here. Whitley will cover inside. He's looking for the tight end going down the middle. At the last moment, he breaks on the ball, comes back outside and gets there just in time to knock it away. Nice defensive play by Darrell Whitley. And it's a fourth down situation for Kansas State. And we're going to see a field goal attempt. Mark Porter will place it down, and this will be a 47-yard effort. With the wind behind him, K-State looking to get on the board first. It's down, the kick is up, and it's got distance. And it is good. So Kansas State has gone on top, begrudgingly, by a Wichita State defense who is surprising here in the first period. It's 3 to nothing uh, from Manhattan. Five twenty-eight remaining in the first period of action. Shockers trailing three to nothing, and they will receive the kickoff after the field goal of forty-seven yards or forty-two yards. Actually, was good. So far, the uh, Shocker defense has held up their end of the bargain. They've stopped K-State on three different possessions, and most of them uh, in Shocker territory. And now it's time for the offense to get something rolling. They can't afford to fall uh, any more behind than they have. Kansas State could be up in this game 10-0 if it weren't for a dropped interception, a potential interception for a touchdown. So uh, we need a big play here for the Shockers. Kenny Helmer will kick it off from his own 40-yard line as he's trying to get the crowd into it right now. And it's a good one here at Kansas State. Not perhaps as big as was expect expected, but a good one nonetheless. Velasco Smith watches it sail through the uprights. It'll be a touchback, and the Shockers will start it from their own 20-yard line. It's been interesting uh, to see how they've been using Velasco Smith, and he's a guy that I'm interested in because he's the kind of guy who can make something out of nothing. And when you do have problems on offense, when you do have some problems in the line, you need a guy who can take the ball in the open field and just do things on his own. Smith is that kind of guy. He's fast, he's shifty, he's got the moves, and uh, if the offense bogs down, they're going to have to find a way to get the ball to him in the open field. Kevin Pierce goes split left, Brock viewing on the near side. McDonald, the quarterback. And he's looking for draw action, and Denson has room. Cutting left, breaking back right, and good yardage out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Good blocking on that right side, put in by Jerry Quick. On the stop was Barton Hundley, who has thought to not be able to play today, but he has come back despite the fact he has some swelling in his right elbow. Denson with the draw action. As you can see, all sorts of daylight for Wichita State. Hundley saves the day as Denson had gotten into the secondary, and he's got good breakaway speed. So a second down and four situation for the Shockers. This time, they send double split outs wide to the left. Fewen and Pierce there. Bring it back to the eye. Denson on the top. 
And he's going to see the ball wide to the left. And he is out across the 30. Good for a shocker first down. On the stop is Jack Epps. Denson looks pretty good so far. Six carries, 24 yards. So that's obviously a four-yard a try average. And we'll take a look at it one more time going over the left side of the line over there behind Jerry Quick and Keith Blunt. And that's a good way to go. Denson running considerably harder, harder at the point of attack than he did a year ago in an offensive system that he was frankly unfamiliar with. Was very tentative getting off the ball last year. As we look at Brian McDonald on a first and ten situation. This time the ball is on the ground as Dwight Eaton coughed it up and the Shockers look to have recovered. Well that could have been disastrous right there. Of course a turnover set up the last uh, which is uh, Kansas State possession which ended up in a field goal and we'll look at it here. Looks like he kind of took his eyes off the ball right there. Looked like a fairly decent exchange. He had his arms up a little high though that time. A little fundamental mistake and that'll always cost you. Taking a look at it from the south end. Eaton has got McDonald's going to get that ball in there as Eaton just never had a handle on it. Second and ten. McDonald back. He's got time. Now he's pressured up the offside and dropped for a loss back to the 23 yard line. Coming in quickly on the play for Kansas State was Kevin Humphrey, 6'3, 238 pound junior out of Wichita Falls, Texas. That time Jerry Quick wasn't quick enough. Uh, Hunley, or rather Murphy, just came right around him and made the stop that time, and Quick was just standing there frustrated. So K-State with our first big defensive play. Drops the Shockers to a third and 18 situation. McDonald, deep drop. And all sorts of folks in on him again as he is knocked down again by Kevin Humphrey, who is responsible for the last 25 yards or so of loss registered by the Kansas State defense. And Brian McDonald has got to have time all season long to do what he wants. Back there in the pocket this time, the offensive line, as they did the play before, was not equal to the task. Well, they didn't have anybody open to begin with. He needed time to set up and look for his secondary receiver, his checkoff receiver, and he never did get a chance. Humphrey came in there and flattened him. And, of course, uh, pass protection was one of the biggest problems for the shock last year they will punt out of their end zone so Armagost again in the purple of the end zone will kick it away Wenzel at his 50 Armagost has gotten good distance on his kicks thus far this time it rolls over and is a little short ball comes down at the 40 Wenzel taking a look at it it gets a Wichita State roll to the 50 and that's where the Shockers will down it and defense will go to work again as Kansas State comes on to the field with two minutes and four seconds remaining it's three to nothing cats lead it from Manhattan <laughs> history with an offer you'll find hard to beat anywhere. First, we're closing out every leftover 85 Ford car, van, and full-size pickup with low 7.7% financing. Or you may choose to take a cash allowance of $400, $500, up to $1,000 direct from Ford. You can even lease a new Ford at reduced rates. This is no ordinary clearance. It's history-making. But you must see your local Ford dealer now. More than telephone service, the Southwestern Bell Network is the messenger of the information age. So Southwestern Bell Telephone installed the most advanced data transmission system available. We're online with the future. The difference in the ball game, a 47-yard effort turned in off the foot of Mark Porter the last time that K-State had possession of the football. Three to nothing with 2.04 remaining in the first period of action. Bruce Earl along with Kerry Addington on the Kansas Broadcasting System. Glad to have you along on a hot and humid day from Manhattan, Kansas. From midfield, actually just beyond, K-State starts another offensive position. Williams back, has a man in the flat, wide open. Making the play in a good move is Dick Warren out of Cape and Mount Carmel High School in Wichita. And he's got himself close to a first down at the 40-yard line. Pickup of nine on the play before he's finally run out of bounds. And watch him right here. Mo Foxworth comes up. Think he has the play made. And zip, little move. Foxworth's on the ground, and they pick up a good gain out of it. Derek Westfield put a licking on him on the near sideline, but the ball squirted out of Warren's hands and out of bounds. No measure for the first down as Warren is close. Warren, of course, remembered perhaps most vividly for a 
reception that he made in a ball game against East in double overtime a few years back when he was playing at Cape and Mount Carmel deep in the end zone to give the Wichita private school the Wichita City League championship at that time and it has been a championship that they have not relinquished since then before that pass Williams was two of six for only 22 yards and you've got to think that they're going to put the ball in the air a little bit more especially in those flats try and stretch out the uh, Wichita State defense they've done a pretty good job stopping the cats on the ground so uh, look for them to get things spread out a little bit here more maybe pass to the flats maybe those quick hook in routes they're on the left hash Williams pitches to the short man trying the left side is Ray Wilson and he's racked up short gain as Kirk Biden killer made the stop for Wichita State I don't think anybody coming into this game expected the shocker defense to play this well this early perhaps not even themselves they're doing a real good job running sideline to sideline the sweeps have just gone nowhere for the Wildcats and every time they seem to end up with about five shirts on top of a cat Weidenkeller, the freshman for Wichita State, 6'1", 220, has been impressive thus far. Second and nine. Shock showing stunt, long count by Kansas State and coming quickly, avoiding the tackle, however, from Weatherby is Williams looking down the sideline. Man is open behind Maurice Foxworth, but overthrown as Weatherby came quickly off the weak side, nearly put a licking. On the quarterback, Randy Williams, we're going to take another look at it. Look how quickly Don Weatherby gets into the action right here. He gets in there, but he just can't get enough of a hold that time on Randy Williams, who's a strong guy, 6'2", 206, and his arm was just a little bit too strong here. He saw he had six points, tried to loft it out there, but it was about five too many. So that'll bring a third and nine situation for Randy Williams, who has been untested. High hopes for the 6'2", 206-pound sophomore, only 24 of two for 251 yards last year, completed uh, 24 passes. Only completed 47% of his passes. This time he's going from the shotgun. Shocks are coming quickly. Williams is thrust from the pocket. Now he's got a man open, and it's knocked away defensively by Wichita State on the near sideline. And who else but Kirk Weidenkeller is there again. So the freshman responding as Wichita State continues to play good defense, and he'll get it on the change of possession. You can't ask for a better play than this. You've got good surge here by the line. It forces Williams out of the pocket. He's having to throw on the run. He digs it into the ground a little bit, and there's Weidenkeller there to knock it away. It has not been a game... Uh, contingent on excitement thus far and we have a timeout on the field K-State is going to talk it over and so will we while well, you take a timeout it's three to nothing with a minute 37 remaining in the first period it appears that Kansas State on fourth and nine from their own 39 or from Wichita State's 39 yard line is going to go for it as you look at the score three to nothing a Mark Porter field goal from 47 yards the only scoring in the ball game so here they come Kansas State's going to give it a shot. Dick Warren is wide to the right. In the shotgun, Randy Williams. With a spoon to the near side. Rolling to his right, coming quickly as Weatherby. The pass is completed, but shy of a first down. Now incomplete, and the Shockers will take over. So some questionable play calling by Kansas State in going for that first down. Obviously a lot of confidence in their defense to this point, and that has been warranted as we take another look. And again, the Shockers are all over Randy Williams. During that last time out, the uh, Kansas State offensive line had a brief huddle on the sidelines. They're obviously, uh, we're talking about pass protection, and they obviously didn't get it all talked out because they really didn't do much better there. So Wichita State will again get decent field position on their own 39-yard line. The offense has been anemic to this point as we take a look at Brian McDonald out of St. Louis, Missouri, the junior. 5'11", 179 pounds, 94 of 115 last year, only 41% through the air. This time on the draw, it's Eric Denson. He's going to be wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage quickly by Reneth Reed. 6'2", 260 pounds out of Wichita Falls, a senior, makes the play in the Shockers. Strong point thus far has been the weak link thus in this ballgame. Well, that draw play was their best play up to this time. The first two times they ran it, they picked up good yardage on it. That time, Denson had a choice of going right or left. He chose left, and it was the wrong way. The right side was plenty open. Second and 12. 
McDonald, straight drop back. This time has some time on the near side. Brock Buen, and he is met quickly on the play by Brad Lambert. But not before he picks up yardage to the 47-yard line. Brock Fewen out of Heston, Kansas on the play. This is exactly the kind of thing the Shockers need to do to get this offense going. Nice delivery right on time and also right on time with a defensive play. Good catch, good hang on that time by Brock Fewen. So the Shockers with only one first down will try to capitalize again here on a third and two situation near midfield. Eden and Denson in the backfield. It's the second man through. Eric Denson, good yardage, picking it up in inside Kansas State territory across the 45 to the 43 before Barton Hundley and Jack Epps stops. A senior out of Titusville, Florida, and he is running the football with authority. That was his eighth carry in the game. He's now over 20, now over 30 yards, right at 30 yards. And you see he's really running with authority. He's picking up those feet and those knees, and he's really stepping out there. He looks like he's in good shape. So the Shockers, for the first time, testing new turf on the Kansas State side of the field. From the pro set, they shift to the eye. Few to the left, Pierce to the near side. McDonald, straight drop, looking for the draw. Denson breaks one tackle, breaks another, and picks up yardage across the 40 near the 37-yard line. Excellent running by the all-time leading rusher in Wichita State history as Grady Newton brought him down. I don't know whether it's a strong running by Denson, who is now down on the ground. He's going to come up, but he looks as though he will come off for just a little while. It looked like he grabbed his right leg there for a second. We hope that's nothing serious, of course. But uh, you're not sure whether it's strong running by him or poor tackling by the Wildcats. Denson has been running well. He broke one there, and he broke another at the line of scrimmage and kept it going. And he has given Wichita State tremendous field position with a second and five approaching them from the K-State 37 when we return. We're at the end of the first period. It's three to nothing, Kansas State on the long end of the stick. And Kerry Addington back with you as Wichita State is trying to get put forth their most concerted offensive effort to this point. On the 37 of Kansas State and heading north. Down three to nothing in the ball game. Shockers gaining some confidence as they go offensively. Started off having their problems. Now they've found themselves a bit of a groove. Denson is out. Velasco Smith dots the eye in the backfield ahead of Eaton. Now they shift to the pro set. Sun creeps across the field as Dwight Eaton tries the left side, bruising at 2.30. He gains to the 35 and then is pushed back by a host of purple shirts. Led on the play by Grady Newton, 6'1", 223, out of Bonner Springs, Kansas. He's a good one. Well, a 3 nothing scoreboard will obviously lead you to believe we haven't had a whole lot of offense so far. And in the first quarter, the Shockers have the edge, 44 total yards, 33 of them coming on the ground. Kansas State only 35 total yards of offense unofficially in the first quarter. Third down and two for Wichita State. They've moved the ball from inside their own 50. This time it's Velasco Smith, and Velasco... After running up the back of his own player, dumps off to the left side, and he is close to a first down and appears to have it. We talked about Smith and his ability to move and make things happen. Here we'll see him run right into somebody. And a quality you want to see in a running back is that ricochet ability, the ability to hit somebody, bounce off, and keep your momentum going. And that time, uh, Smith had another two yards. They're going to take a look at it as Velasco Smith is close to the first down. A hot sunny day with a light breeze, or actually a strong breeze, blowing from south to north as the Shockers have picked up the first down and talking to Dr. Ray Cook, one of the team physicians for Wichita State. No longer do they use salt on days like this. When you lose your, when you're sweating, it's obviously water, and they want to replace that water as quickly as they possibly can using high electrolytes and trying to keep these kids healthy. Heat prostration, not a problem, particularly because of the high humidity, at least according to Dr. Cook today. Shockers with the first down now at the 33. McDonald back to pass, has a man underneath, and making the reception appears to be Dwight Eaton. He's inside the 30-yard line, and the Shockers pick up good yardage once again. And that's what they're gonna have to do. They're gonna have to get some quick pop-type things over the middle. That time they had their back in the slot and he comes right over the middle. There's going to be an open pocket there when the outside receivers take those corners long. You're going to have a little bit of a gap underneath. That time McDonald was able to find it. Shocker's passing game predominantly a short one. Eaton good for four yards there and it's a second down situation. Shocker's knocking on the door. Inside the 30 for the first time in the ballgame. Again a draw, Velasco Smith. 
Cutting out back left and gaining yardage across the 25 and inside to the 24-yard line. Barton Hundley was on the stop, but not before Velasco picks up another five yards inside the 25-yard line. He's an exciting runner. He really is, and we don't want to harp on this too much, but it's that ability to do things on your own that separate the great backs from the good ones. And this time we'll watch Smith come up the middle. He stalls here for just a minute, but he decides to jump outside, and that's what made the play go. Third and one for the Shockers at the 24-yard line. They've gone to the draw. A good 35 to 40 percent of their running plays thus far. McDonald drops the snap from center, and it will bring a decision for Ron Chismar here, and we're going to see Sergio Lopez Chavarro on fourth down. So the Shockers miscue, stalls the drive, and we'll see Chavarro trying to tie it up. Now this is Brian McDonald's 15th consecutive game to start for the Shockers and there he showed a little bit of what that experience has done for him. A lot of guys when they drop the ball like that try to pick it back up and do something. That's when you usually get into trouble. McDonald knew they were in field goal range, fell on it, now they'll get a shot. Serge will spot it at the 32, a 42-yard attempt here coming up. It's snapped down, it's up, and it appears to be true, and it is. We've got a tie ball game from Manhattan as the Shockers have pulled back even. It's 3-3. Three to three. So the two place kickers have put both teams on the scoreboard. 3-3, three, three. and Sergio Lopez Chavarro will follow it up with the kickoff. Deep to return, Reggie Memby and Dimitri Scott. Heading down into the end zone and following up along the left-hand side is Dimitri Scott. He's got running room, driving up to the 30. Actually, that's James Witherspoon, and he's crossed the 35 to the 37-yard line before he's finally stopped on the play by the kicker, Lopez Chavarro. So James Witherspoon with a good offensive effort right there. Chris Batsyong also on the stop. Witherspoon rushed for over 4,000 yards in his high school career at Liberal. They retired his jersey up there, and he shows some of that ability right here going right up the alley. It's a good thing uh, Shavaro made the play there. He may have gone all the way, 103 yards. So Wichita State now defensively again will line it up. Shocks thus far have thrown, as you can see, for 15 yards, K-State 32. Keep in mind that the Shockers are talking about Kansas State being a predominantly passing ball club, 60-40, some of the folks were figuring coming into this season, and thus far they have been equal to the task. That is the Wichita State defense. 11.54 remaining, first half action. We're all even at three from Manhattan. Glad to have you along on the season opener. First of at least three Wichita State broadcasts and possibly four. Our next broadcast will be next week live from the Metroplex in Minneapolis as the Shockers take on the Golden Gophers from the Big Ten at University of Minnesota. Possibly four, yeah. Keep the suspense level up there, That's Bruce. That's right. You never know. Timeout on the field, and when we regain action, it'll be first and 10 for K-State at the 37-yard line. K-State trying to improve on three wins of a year ago. Wichita State on two. Williams bellying the option on the near side, gives to the first man, and Jim Mann will have none of that. It's one of the first times we've seen him come out in the option this time. Uh, Williams came out gave with, with the uh, straight ahead give to the fullback that time nothing doing because Jim Mann here so far has played a tremendous ball game he is dominating his opponent Shockers went 36 yards on 10 plays 42 yard field goal off the foot of Sergio Lopez Chavarro one of the best kickers in NCAA Division one this year Kansas State looked to be moving too quickly Jordan is deep on wide on the left side he's across first down yardage and out of bounds but we're going to bring it back it's going to be five yards against k-state or at least that appears to be the initial indication it's really about the first big mistake for uh, the wildcats so far in this game wichita state has been penalized twice for 10 yards both of those really hurt good offensive drives and now uh, the wildcats have made a mistake we saw him go with the pitch off the option that time Jordan gained yardage to the 49, but it's going to be nullified, and we're going to see an illegal motion. Tacked on to K-State. And so the Purple Pride will be beset with a second and 15 situation. And as we mentioned, that was the Wildcats' first penalty uh, for five yards. Now, this is something that uh, we're used to seeing from Jim Dickey teams, multiple offense, various sets. Right now, they uh, look to be going from the option formation. We'll see what they do this time. 
Williams calling the signals. Bellying to the left, gives it to the second man, balls on the ground, and it's out of bounds. They're trying to go along the far side to Todd Moody on the pitch, and the miscue ensued. Ball went out of bounds, and the Shockers have backed Kansas State up consistently. Bad decision that time by Williams. Look in here. He, he's in a lot of trouble, and he really tried to dish it back fast, and when you usually do that, the timing on the pitch isn't right, and of course, that time it wasn't right and shot right out of bounds. A lucky break for the Wildcats. That uh, ball could have bounced around and been a Shocker one. So just about a third and 11 situation now for Kansas State. On the left hash mark, Williams from the split backfield. Draw situation and the ball is sent hard to the turf. Mitch Morris in on his first defensive play of the ball game as Kansas State sent Todd Moody to the line of scrimmage and Wichita State's defense has held a steadfast once again and have been very impressive through the first period of action and indeed here into the second. So they'll get it on the turnover or actually on the change of possession via the punt. Maurice Foxworth will be deep for Wichita State. Punting the ball will be Troy Fonts. First punt he had went 41 yards, fairly decent punt. And we'll see what he can do here. Uh, this would be a good chance for the Shockers to get some field position should they be able to handle this. Kicking against the wind, and it's a flat, flat punt. Gets a Kansas State bounce across the 40 to the 35. And wouldn't you know it, it's going to bounce to the 30. Down at the 31. And so after a 42-yard kick from Fonts, Wichita State will take over at their own 31-yard line. It's a 3-3 three three ball game. we got a dandy going here in Manhattan. Who would have thought it? Brian McDonald, as we come back quickly to action, hands off to Velasco Smith. He's out to the 35-yard line as Wichita State starts yet another offensive possession. It's going to be interesting to see what Wichita State does with this possession. They've experimented very briefly with the pass. They've tried to do the safe routes, the outs, the things like that. Their biggest plays have come up the middle, off tackle on the draw. So we'll see what they do here. Glasgow Smith unofficially eight yards on four carries. But they've all been exciting yards. Indeed they have. Second down, six to go for the Shockers. Play action rolling out. He's being pressured and now is being knocked down at the 30 yard line. As Kansas State comes hard defensively and makes the play. David Wallace in the middle amongst others on the play. Reneth Reed as well. Right there, McDonald had his face mask grabbed. It was an unintentional face mask, but that still should have been called. So it'll bring a third and 11 situation. A passing down for Wichita State at their own 29, just shy of the 30-yard line. We're all even at three, nine minutes remaining, first half action. So you can see one more time. Play doesn't change much, does it? No, and he's been used to that. Still a loss. Straight drop back. McDonald being pressured and now is going down. That was just a great play that time by Renneth Reed, who just was on the ground and just fumbled around, found a sock or a shoelace or something there and was able to grab McDonald and pull him down. We'll take another play at it right here. Kenneth Humphrey also in on the play as McDonald actually had time, but none of the pass routes were available. And Kenneth Humphrey made the play. Armagas will be back to kick. Wenzel deep to receive. This time with the wind at his back, Armagas could get off a good one. Long count, no pressure, and here's the kick. It's high in the air, hanging and getting some distance. At his own 30, Wenzel takes it across the 35 to the 40, being strung out, and it's knocked down across the 41-yard line. So again, Kansas State with good field position is the shocker defense. Much maligned a year ago when they gave up some 400 yards of ball game, but steadily improving throughout the season, comes onto the field as they have been impressive thus far in this ball game. We took a look at Wenzel out of Manhattan, Kansas. Made a nice play here. Manhattan, of course, very strong 6A football team. That they are, and Wenzel, as we mentioned earlier, was a standout for them, an all-around athlete, and obviously a, a, uh, an obvious guy to put in that situation. You want a guy who has all-around skills, who can handle the ball, catch it, and who also has some smarts and some experience. It's a very tough position to play. Maybe the toughest returning punts. 7.59 remaining. Where is a timeout on the field. We're all even at three. A reminder, the Shocks in Minnesota on the air next week. 
from the Hubert Humphrey Metrodome in Minneapolis. Gary Addington and yours, Julie Bruce Hurdle with all the play-by-play -play action right here on the Kansas Broadcasting System. Next week for Kansas State, it'll be Northern Iowa right here at home. Then they've got Texas Christian, North Texas State, and Oklahoma as they get into the body of their Big 8 schedule. A couple of scores to pass along. Colorado beat Colorado State 23-10 to today. And Florida State in the third period is leading Nebraska 17-13. to Ooh. So that's a bit of a surprise that, from Lincoln. That it is. Now we're ready to go. 3-3 ball game. Kansas State coming set at their own 42. Williams will pass the football. Seeing good pressure. He gets it off across the middle. Kirk Allen picks it off. And the Shockers are going to get a turnover. And they're going to take over inside the Kansas State 40-yard line. So Kirk Allen, the sophomore out of Wichita East. He's played on a state championship football team. So and he comes up with a dandy defensive play right here. Sure did. Now we're even. One interception apiece for either defense. This is just a tremendous play by Allen. You practice the tip drill for weeks. You never think it's going to pay off. That time was batted around a couple of times. He wanted the ball, and he came down with it. We'll look at it from his view here. Excellent defensive pressure put on on the weak side by Mitchell Morris as he made Williams perhaps throw a little bit early, and Kirk Allen was there to reap the rewards, and the Shockers take over. Second man through, Velasco Smith quickly to the line of scrimmage and beyond. Good yardage surging forward behind the offensive right side across the 35 and inside to the 33-yard line. A stop on the play by Scott White out of Sarasota, Florida. The thing you look for on the offensive line is the surge, the initial movement. Are they taking the other team's defensive line backwards or is it a standoff? That time, Greg Edwards, Pat Kane, and John Pratt just moved them out on that right side. So Brian McDonald faces a second and four situation. Eaton and Velasco Smith continue to be the backfield. Jose Wilson in actually now. And it's Velasco Smith cutting back right. He's got running room across the 30. Penalty marker down. And on that interior, that generally is significant for a holding possibility. We'll wait and see as Velasco Smith popped it across the 30 to the 29. Close to first down yardage. And it's against Kansas State. And that's a big call. It was hard to tell exactly what happened over there. Velasco it, Smith really driving hard at the point of attack, Kerry, and he has been impressive. I'll tell you, a quality that he has besides the ones we've already talked about, he has great field vision. Up here, it's easy for us to say he should have run left or should have run right. When you're down there, it's just a maze of bodies. Everything's flattened out. But Smith has that sixth sense. He has the ability to find that opening, to feel it, and to run up inside it quickly. And here you see it. He cuts up. He knows he's got some room to operate here he just blows by uh, the guys there in the upper line if he'd gotten by that guy he might have had some more but at least he had the surge shocks are actually going to spot the ball to the 25 after the penalty which we believe was an inadvertent face mask if so we're moving it five yards forward to the 29 actually that's to the 24 yard line and that's where brian mcdonald comes set with the shockers coming to the left side velasco smith and this time he's knocked up behind the line of scrimmage by Kevin Humphrey on the play, so all the speed in the world could not elude Kevin Humphrey defensively that time for the Cats. Not a whole lot of help in the middle of that offensive line that time. The uh, down lineman for Kansas State came right in there that time. Humphrey, Renneth Reed, the senior jumping in that time. And so far, Smith in seven carries now has 17 yards, a loss on that one. Valesco Smith out of Pratt Junior College. Brian McDonald facing a 10 second and 12 situation now. On the drive, Velasco, and he's into the secondary with good room. Slips and falls just shy of the 20 yard line. They'll spot it at the 22. And Velasco, who prides himself on stopping on a dime that time, had his feet go out from underneath him as Barton Hundley made the play, but still good explosion from Velasco Smith. That's true, and. Uh there's always a little bit of a transition when you go to artificial turf. Uh, things don't cut as well. Uh, you're wearing a different type of shoe. And this turf especially is very short, the fibers on it. It is kind of slick. Facing a third and eight is Wichita State. Inside the 25 at the 23. They mark the ball. 
Split backfield. McDonald drops straight back. Seeing blitz. Man open across the middle. He hits the tight end. Jack Owens out of Carson, California. The Juco transfer makes the play, and the Shockers have a first and goal inside the 10. What do you know? The offense is starting to come to life. Brian McDonald made that play. Look, a guy right in his face, and he rifles the ball right over the middle. No one can say McDonald doesn't have enough arm, and he looks to have the touch. We'll see it one more time. There's a guy going to come up right through the middle here, 58, 95, rather, right in his face, and he goes ahead and makes a perfect throw. He has a low trajectory throw, and sometimes that'll help you. It did there. So the Shockers inside, knocking on the door at the 8-yard line. McDonald to give it to the second man, Velasco Smith, and he gets a licking just inside the 10-yard line and is knocked down hard. Now they're going to the well one too many times now with that deep handoff to Velasco Smith. The uh, outside men on the Kansas State defensive line are beginning to make some adjustments. They're not charging in as quickly. They're waiting. They're taking that half second to take a look and see where Smith is going to go and then follow him. Renneth Reed knocked him down that time, and so the Shocks face a second and goal. 3-3, we're all even. The field goal kickers thus far are the only scoring proponents in this ballgame. First serious scoring opportunity from a touchdown standpoint for either team. This time McDonald, bootleg, rolling out. Now comes back the other way. Velasco Smith is at the goal line, and he's in for a touchdown. The Shockers have scored to take a 9-3 lead at Kansas State. He came back to Velasco Smith after dropping back and bootlegging to his left. He found the man open in the flat, and Velasco pushed it through, and the Shockers have gone in front 9-6 to six as a surprise is brewing in the first half in Manhattan. No uh, offsides penalties, no drop snaps, and uh, they kept the drive alive and kept it in there. Lopez Chavarro will try to knock it through and give the Shockers a touchdown and an extra points lead. Kick is up, and the kick is good. And so Wichita State has been impressive through the first half of action and lead it by a score of 10 to 3 as we take a second look at the touchdown. Now here you have most of the action in the end zone, and the Kansas State secondary is running around in that end zone, trying to figure out which way McDonald's going to go. They leave Smith alone. He's the short guy. They let him catch it underneath, and he puts a good shot there at the right time ran right into him and used his momentum to take him into the end zone. Now watch it again here. Kansas State's going to be a little bit tentative. They see McDonald rolling left and they fade that way. Now when he comes back right, everybody's caught a step short. He flips it to Smith just at the right time and the free safety there doesn't have a chance. McDonald unofficially four of six through the air for 38 yards and a touchdown to Velasco Smith to put the Shockers ahead. Ten to three. Four minutes, 19 seconds remaining here in the first half of action. And the Shockers up by seven. Sergio Lopez Chavarro will kick it off. You've really got to be impressed with the poise that Brian McDonald has back there. Uh, he's been hit plenty. Last year he lost over 370 yards. So he knows what it's like to get back there and get hammered. He's a little savvy now. He knows when to make the move, knows when to stay in the pocket. And right there he knew exactly where to go with the football. Dimitri Scott and Mark Wenzel are deep to receive the kick of Lopez Chavarro. As the Shocks, looking to make strides in 85, are off to a 10-3 lead here at Kansas State. Chavarro with a flat kick, and it goes to the end zone and out. It'll be a touchback for Kansas State as they will start their own offense from their own 20-yard line. To recap, starting the story of scoring for Kansas State was Mark Porter, who booted a 47-yard field goal. Lopez Chavarro. A few minutes later, tied it up from 42 yards out, and Velasco Smith has just taken it in from seven yards to give Wichita State a 10-3 lead here in Manhattan. Attendance today, 30,300 in some searing heat. Now let's see if the Cats are going to move it out, put it out. Randy Williams has been unimpressive through the air thus far. The Kansas State offense sputtering. This time he tries it, bellying right, and picks up yardage across the 25, close to the 26-yard line. Defensively on the stop, Mark Duncans and Kirk Allen, the core of the Wichita State defense. The option play seems to taste the best for the Wildcats right now. They seem to get Wichita State split out a little bit. Holes are beginning to be created there through the middle, and that time Williams couldn't ignore the opening that came for him that time. Picks up good yardage, six yards officially, and it'll be a second and four offering for Kansas State. 
with each play, the Shocker confidence has got to be growing as you take a look at the breakdown of the scoring drive. And now Randy Williams is going to take a little time and talk things over with Coach Jim Dickey. And you've got to be wondering if you're Kansas State at this point, Kerry, exactly what's going through their head because offensively they have not moved the football. Only three of ten is Randy Williams through the air for 30% and only 32 yards, most of them uh, totally unconsequential. Uh, it's got to be gnawing away at their confidence level. I don't, I don't think that they uh, anticipated at all the success that uh, Wichita State would have rushing the passer and playing up front. We're going to look one more time at the uh, touchdown play, I believe. McDonald, they're Good. looking left, now running right, finding Velasco Smith over there in the flat. And as we said earlier in the broadcast, to get this offense opened up, they're going to have to find Smith in the open field where he can take that ball and stick it in there and that's what he did there he's really the difference in the game so far Ron Chismar second year head coach formerly the offensive coordinator at Arizona State with Daryl Rogers who has since moved on to the pro ranks with the Detroit Lions and previous to that of course at Michigan State in the Big Ten Kansas State comes set facing a second and four situation they're down seven points in the ball game 340 remaining in the second period Randy Williams sends Jordan in motion now rolling to the strong side. Finds Jordan in the flat. Breaks the tackle of Maurice Foxworth. Outrunning the coverage now across to the 35 to the 37 yard line. Kirk Allen with the lateral flow made the play. But not before Kansas State picked up a first down. As we take a second look. Randy Williams he's got good size. And this time he had the student body out in front of him. To find the man in the flat. Now this is the kind of uh, offense that we expected to see from Kansas State coming in. The short outs. The quick passes. The rollout type situations because they do have some good skill athletes. All their backs can catch the ball and do something with it after they catch it. First down, Kansas State. Just across their own 35. Straight drop back. Williams looking to the short side. Finds Ray Wilson over there. He's got running room across the 45 to the 46. He'll be marked down to the 47-yard line where Darrell Whitley made the play. But again, Kansas State on two consecutive plays have clicked off first downs, this time by the big fullback out of McPherson, Kansas. There's a little bit of a momentum shift, I think, that we can see right now. There's not as much penetration by the Wichita State defensive line. Uh, maybe this lead has gotten them a little complacent, a little overconfident at this point. They need to get that intensity back that they had to start the game. From the eye, Kansas State will start just on their side of the field at the 47. William shifts Jordan over, now rolls to his left. He's got a man on the sideline. This down decides to run it, turns it up across the 50 to the 45. Ball's loose. Wichita State up with it. He cannot advance a fumble in NCAA college football. And Randall Cooper, nonetheless, is going to turn it over for Wichita State. Well, Randy, a few more years in the NFL, and you're going to have yourself a touchdown. But this time, the free safety out of Atlanta, Georgia, is going to bring it back. And the Shockers have their second turnover as we take a second look. Williams unable to hold on to the football. Well, this time he was looking to pass downfield. The play was designed for a streak pattern down the left side. Williams couldn't get it, had to tuck it under. Didn't tuck it under well enough, though. Mark Duckins made the initial stick. Williams caught the ball up as we'll take another look at it from the deep angle in the end zone. Williams has been ineffective thus far, and Coach Jim Dickey has got to be a little worried about his sophomore signal caller answering the call to this point. Nice stick coming back on the flow by Duckins. And the play was made by Randall Cooper. Now it's Eric Denson back into the ball game. Picks up two yards across to the 50-yard line. And so the Shockers with another chance before the half is completed to put the ball in the end zone. That time, I'm not sure if they ran the play they wanted to call. I think uh, they may have audibled a little bit at the line. McDonald uh, questioning that call, looking immediately over the sideline to Ron Chismar, who has to be ecstatic about the way his team has played on both sides of the ball so far. I don't think anyone expected them to play this well. They are arriving very quickly here is Wichita State leading 10 to 3. Two minutes and counting now in this the first half of action. McDonald with split backs. Straight drop. Has time. Looks downfield. Finds Kevin Pierce. Pierce to the 30-yard line. Knocked out of bounds at the 31. And the Shockers are on the move once again as it's good for a first, a first down to the senior Kevin Pierce. And again, you have to be impressed with McDonald's confidence. Watch him stand up here. He's looking, he's looking. He's in no hurry at all. And then he just rockets the ball there to Pierce. Perfect play. Excellent cup protection and drop back pass protection by the offensive line, who after a shaky start 
are starting to play a little bit here in the second period of action. There we see the total offense numbers. Wichita State still uh, about 13 yards ahead and seven ahead on the board. Misdirection for Jose Wilson, and he was stopped behind the line of the scrimmage. They tried to go with a little cross buck action, and the Sharks were stacked up for a two-yard loss. Minute 37 and counting down now. Sharks have three timeouts to play with as the clock becomes more and more a factor here. Jose Wilson, last season, gained 103 yards for Wichita State, 231 career yards, but most importantly, a 5.4 yards per carry rushing average. That time he lost three. 213, or second and 13, excuse me, 109 remaining. McDonald looking to pass, has time, has a man open in the near side. Jose Wilson ev ev evades one tackler and then is knocked down at the 30 yard line. So they're back to the line of screen, original line of scrimmage and beyond. It'll bring a third down situation. Wichita State now trying to extend that Kansas State secondary a little bit. Not doing a real good job of it. They're having to go with the underneath and the short stuff. They did send one man deep that time, but K-State kind of let him go and uh, was looking for this play. Timeout has been called on the field as Wichita State will tack it over on the near sideline. Brian McDonald and Ron Chismar, a meeting of the minds. Two timeouts remaining. Six completion for Brian McDonald. He's tried eight attempts been good for an unofficial total of 60 yards. And the one thing that uh, had really been missing from the uh, offensive attack for the Shockers so far in this game was uh, offensive line and their pass blocking. Now I think McDonald senses that he is going to have another half second or two and it's showing. He's taking his time and he's finding his receiver. The guys up front never get enough notice. We'll give it to him now. Greg Edwards is the center. 6'1", 235, a senior out of Chicago. Keith Blunt and Pat Kane on either side of him at the guards. John Pratt and Big Jerry Quick out of Anthony, Kansas at the tackles. USC has defeated Illinois today 20 to 10. That is a final. There you see McDonald on the day, six of eight, not bad. Penn State runs their series record against Maryland to 28 and 1 beating the Terrapins today in College Park Maryland 28 to 20. Shockers face a third and eight and they'll go from the eye. Pierce to the left, few into the right. Draw for Eric Denson. He's got yardage. Oh and it the hole closes up quickly as he crosses the 30 yard line to the 28. Denson stopped on the play by a host of Kansas State purple jerseys led by Southeast product Dwayne Castile. Denson here has quickness, but you can see the difference between him and, say, a Velasco Smith. See, Denson gets into trouble, and he hesitates just a little too long. When you get in a situation like that, you can't stand around. You've got to explode one way or the other and get those defensive guys moving. If you stand there, it just narrows down your options, and they can come in there and put the clamps on you. Eric Denson, as you can see, has carried the ball 11 times for 42 yards, good for a 4.2 average. And now Wichita State is going to take yet another timeout to get the field goal team on the field. They ran the clock down to 11 seconds, and now we're going to see Sergio lopez Chivaro try to tack it three points onto the Wichita State lead and go into the intermission, leading 13-3. to three. And my, oh, my, what a surprise we've got brewing here in K-State. As Ron Chismar has got to be ecstatic with his Shockers performance here in the first half action. Conversely, Jim Dickey, a little disillusioned perhaps about his Wildcats. And the uh, home field advantage has not been so far. The crowd has definitely been out of this game. And uh, if I was sitting out there in that sun, I might be a little out of it myself. It is hot up there. So Serge is gonna try to give the Shocks an advantage of 10 points. And he's got the ball just to the left of center. And he'll place it down from about 45 yards out. Dave Armagost will set it. As the Shocks, impressive defensively and gaining confidence offensively here in the first half, have surprised. Ball is set. Chavarro didn't get anything on this one. A line drive, and it goes for not. So with seven seconds remaining, K-State will get at least one offensive play off. As Serge just got that ball, perhaps a late place or a high boot, but one way or the other, it sailed under the crossbars, totally unaffected. Now we'd like to have that one back. Uh, 
He just didn't hit the ball very well that time. It didn't have a chance from the time it left the tee. So Randy Williams will play his hand one time, seven seconds worth. Wichita State will drop their defensive secondary, then four deep in the secondary, back to about 20 yards. As Williams will take a snap from center. He's going to bring it near side, running the football, and he has room. Now he's finally knocked down, and that'll do it for the half as Williams is finally knocked off his feet on the play by Mitchell Morris. And we head to the intermission. Three Wichita State leading at the intermission. Who would have thought it? Well, perhaps the Shockers themselves. You've got to believe in yourself before things can happen, and the Shockers thus far, Kerry, have been tremendous, especially on the defensive side of the football field. They really have, and as you said, I don't think anybody expected this, except perhaps the Shockers. They came into this game not favored, no pressure, and they've just come in and played their game. However, Kansas State got on the board first. Mark Porter from 47 yards out in the first period. At this point, Kansas State led three to nothing. Then a game, quite frankly, typified by the morality of this uh, Kansas State ball club at this point in time. They've got to be thinking What's going on here? Yeah, they really do. Mental attitude is everything, especially when uh, you're evenly matched, as it seems these two teams are today. Wichita State's going to come out and try to get something moving. Consistency. Six for eight through the air. A touchdown for Brian McDonald. He comes set for the first time in the second half. Splits the backfield. That's Eaton and Denson answering the opening bell. Dwight Eaton carries. Gaining ground over the 25. Close to the 30 and a first down as good line surge off that left side. Before the stop of Barton Hundley propels Wichita State close to a first down situation. You said it, line surge. Watch the left side of the line there. Jerry Quick and Keith Blunt standing their men up. And that time, Dwight Eaton just went in there, put his head down, and rode it out for all he could get, and he got quite a bit. Shocker is down on the field. It appears, well, we'll hold off on it. Or check it, that is a K-State player. Wildcat trainers now bending over the athlete. We can't quite tell who it is at this time. They'll get a field position. This might be a good time to air it out, but Wichita State looking to gain momentum here early may go for the first down. They dot the eye. McDonald with a long count. Second man through is Eric Denson, and he is racked up for a loss, and it'll be a third and one situation. As busting in there for Kansas State with a host of people. Led by David Wallace. Things beginning to tighten up a little bit now between the tackles. Kansas State, as we expected, making some adjustments, and they're a textbook tackle on the play. David Wallace really wrapped his man up. He's got good speed inside, not particularly good size in the inside backer at 214. But he got in the backfield quickly and negated a shocker first down. Now you've got yourself a third and one. Brock Fewin on the near side, Kevin Pierce up high on your screen. This time they'll sweep. Denson to the 30 for the first down, but not much more. As David Wallace again, this time flowing to the action, makes the play. And it appears as if the Kansas State defenders got an earful in the locker room. They're playing with a lot more intensity right now. They're fighting off those blocks at the point of attack, and that gives them another second to get over and make the play. And I tell you, one guy who definitely listened to whatever was said in that locker room was David Wallace. He's looked good on the last two plays. First down for Wichita State, given up begrudgingly by Kansas State. McDonald at his own 31-yard line. Play action, rolling the other way. He's forced out of the pocket, still picking up room across the 30 to the 35, where he's run out of bounds, and there's a late hit by Timmy McDonald out of Leewood, Kansas, and so they're going to tack on a few more yards. McDonald went down hard on the near sideline, and, of course, that is a source of concern. Coach Chismar taken out there as well as we take another look. Brian McDonald, and this is his strength. He's a good drop back passer, ever improving, but he gives you that added dimension as he has the ability with quick feet to create things out of the pocket. Now here's why the penalty was called. McDonald rolling right now. Watch him decide just to step out. He's already called it quits, and then McDonald hits McDonald out of bounds. That's going to be a flag every time. See Brian pull up and rest there, and he's hit well out of bounds. 
That is not the type of thing you like to see your defensive people do. And that's a huge play because that gets them right near midfield and totally changes uh, the options available to the Wichita State offense. They're right in midfield now, and they can open things up, do pretty much what they want, and this is exactly what they needed. So Brian McDonald from the near hash mark, working at his phone 49-yard line, just shy of the 50. Eden and Denson in the backfield. Slot left. They go to the I formation. Long count. Denson takes it deep. And he picks up two yards across the 50 to the 49. Wallace again in on the stop. And a pickup of one on the play for Eric Denson out of Titusville, Florida. The all-time leading rusher for Wichita State. Had a subpar year last year. Kansas State, as you can see now, has been penalized four times for 30 yards. The last a personal foul. Late hit on Timmy McDonald. The only two penalties for Wichita State, both coming on illegal procedure, a little offsides action in the offensive line. So they've played pretty error-free football. Rushak taking it easy. As his playing counterparts aren't. Wichita State moving as Kansas State comes with a safety blitz. They pick it up quickly, a drag pattern across the middle, and it's picked up by Jack Owens, the tight end, and good for a Wichita State first down into Kansas State territory at the 36-yard line. So they came with the backers. They blitzed everything they could. Look on the top of your screen. Kansas State was bringing a lot of meat on the hoof, but McDonald quickly got it off over the middle, and Owens made the play for the first down to the 36-yard line. Well, that was a case of the perfect call at the perfect time. That's just the kind of play you want to counteract a blitz like that, and that worked out well for the Shockers. They're moving. Shockers started this drive on their own 20-yard line. They have gone to K-State's 35. Brian McDonald calling the signals there. Jerry Quick and the strong side of the offensive line up to the left. Driving back is McDonald. He has time. Now looking to the near side, and it's through the hands of Dwight Eaton. He really didn't have too many ways to go that time, but he did, again, show some patience and experience. He looked all over the field, saw who he thought to be the best receiver, possibly the safest receiver, and uh, he threw it down in a way where the only person that could get it was the intended receiver, Dwight Eaton. So a second and 10 for Wichita State. Going against the wind, which is still a factor, blowing briskly from south to north here. The Shockers, of course, heading south. And now Brian McDonald is going to call a timeout to talk about a late hit from inside backer Timmy McDonald. And the Shocks will take it all any way they can get. From the split backfield, now they move to the eye. Eaton in front, Denson in back. They'll go to the draw once again. Denson cutting through to the 35, inside to the 34. Ball was whistled down before it squirted loose. A pickup of about one on the play. Renneth Reed in on the stop as he has been... Much of the afternoon, 6'2", 262 out of Wichita Falls, Texas. Denson not quite as effective on the draw play as Velasco Smith has been throughout this game, but it's always to your advantage to have two good backs that you can put back there. They can spell each other, and uh, that makes for a good situation. Keeps you fresh. Third and nine for Wichita State now at the 35-yard line. Florida State has beaten Nebraska 17-13. Another upset in the making here, potentially. McDonald chased out of the pocket, gets it downfield, and it's out of the hands of Kevin Pierce, who gave it a good leap. But it goes for not, and Wichita State will have a decision facing them. Boy, Eric Denson that time was clear and all alone, deep in the corner. We're going to take a look now at Kevin Pierce coming off the line, running and uh, in-out pattern here. He was the intended receiver, but really, if McDonald could have looked a little bit farther downfield, Eric Denson was all by himself. Pierce doing a good job trying to adjust to the ball, but McDonald throwing on the run, a little bit pressured, and it goes just a little bit high. Still not even a bad effort. Now Sergio lopez Chavarro, apparently not feeling the ill effects from the tackle he made on the kickoff in the first half, is going to try a boot against the wind from 52 yards. Armagas will set it. The kick is up. It's got distance, but it's sailing to the left and will be no good. So, and Chavarro is down without a penalty marker, probably still feeling some pain in his back. He took a good shot, knocking Tim Witherspoon off his feet in the first half of the uh, play on a kickoff return, and he is still obviously feeling the effects of that. So as we take a look at him, we'll leave Manhattan with your score, 10 to three, Wichita State leading, coming set at their own 35. First and 10, 11-24 remaining third period action. 
Williams pops it up, giving it to Jordan. He can't get the handle on it. Ball still loose. And now we're going to have all sorts of flags thrown on the play. We're going to get a late hit against Wichita State, I believe, right here. Mark Duckins came in to put the stick on Jordan. And unfortunately for Wichita State, it's going to go for not as they're going to get a personal foul, unnecessary roughness, or late hit tacked on them. And we'll see why here on this replay. Pretty unnecessary. You can't, you can't forget in your over-exuberance that when the ball is down in college football, it is down at that point. So as soon as Jordan hits the floor that's it I'm not sure Duckins thought that Jordan had the ball put away there he does have it put away we can see that but I think Duckins was already in the air he saw the ball rolling around a little bit and I think just took a chance there when uh, a team has already gone back for a loss that big that's not a bad chance to take but it uh, didn't really work out to the Shockers best advantage Shockers get hurt on it and it is now a first and ten from the 40 yard line Kansas State gets a break off the miscue Williams, belly option, ball is down again. Williams back, jumps on it, ball still free. Shockers look like they've come up with it as they're rankling around under the pile for it. It could be a big turnover if Wichita State indeed does come up with it. Everybody's pointing, as is usually the custom on a fumble. Referees in there trying to get it undone, and Wichita State has come up with the football, a key turnover, as they'll take over at the 24-yard line of Kansas State. Derek Westfield appears to be the guy that came up with it. Now watch Don Weatherby come in here. He makes the play, knocks the ball away, and wraps up the quarterback. Williams goes after it, doesn't do a good job of covering the ball. It was bouncing around Mitch Morris and a lot of guys in the pile up there, but Derek Westfield comes up with it and the biggest play of the game so far. Third turnover for Kansas State against one for the Shockers and all of a sudden opportunity knocks loud and clear on the doorstep of Wichita State. From the pro set with Kevin Pierce to the right. They'll send Brock View into the left. Split backfield. Velasco Smith and Jose Wilson. Brian McDonald calling the signals. They shift to the eye. McDonald from the 24. Takes the ball. Wheels. Gives to Velasco Smith. He's delivered a hard hit inside the 25 as he's dropped to the 22-yard line. Good for a pickup of three on the play as the Shockers face the second and seven. The straight-ahead stuff really isn't working right now for Wichita State. K-State doing a good job of plugging things up in there. Velasco Smith, not the biggest of guys, but he's got a fairly good day going. 19 yards on nine carries. But they're going to have to do something else here. We're going to have to maybe see that draw or maybe some outside stuff. Renneth Reed, as he is generally on the stop for Kansas State. Shocks now facing a second and actually make it eight. From the 23. Smith starts to shift then thinks the better for it. They'll put it in the air. Ball is deflected into the flat and falls incomplete. The intended receiver was Jack Owens. Tim McDonald broke it up. Applying the pressure to Brian McDonald, and all of a sudden the Shockers face a third down situation. And now in the passing department for Wichita State, Brian McDonald now 7 of 12, and look, he had really no chance here. Right in the face, he just threw it away, did a good job getting rid of the ball. Pardon Hundley, incidentally, back into the ball game for Kansas State. You'll remember on that last series of downs, he went out with an injury. Third and eight for the Shockers. Back to pass, McDonald has a man open in the end zone, or at least he did for a moment. And it appeared to be on the offside, but Kansas State had the men in the middle taken care of no problem whatsoever. As we take a second look, McDonald with the straight drop back. They were looking for six here going to the end zone. Flag is down on the play as the ball is thrown up towards the tight end, Jack Owens, but good defensive pressure from Kansas State, and the pass is negated. We'll take a look at Owens here as he goes on his post pattern into the end zone. Wichita State fans thought there was some interference here, but the defensive back on the play had the position. He was all right, and that's a good play. It looks like it's going to be negated one way or the other anyway, as Kansas State could move Wichita State back here. The initial indication seems to be holding against Wichita State on a third down situation. McDonald through the air, high percentage, not a lot of yards. He does have the one touchdown pass to Velasco Smith. 
Bruce, we have just under 10 minutes to go in this third quarter, but an awful lot of time has passed with the Wichita State offense on the field. That means the defense has had a lot of time to sit over there in the shade of the bench and get a lot of rest, and that's a good sign for the Shocks. And very important to note, perhaps, it may seem trivial, but Wichita State side of the field now is covered in shadow, whereas Absolutely. Kansas State is still in the sun. Brad Fleeman, the freshman out of Wichita, Kansas, Cape and Mount Carmel, will boot it up. The set is down, the kick is up, and it appears to be good as Brad Fleeman has connected in his first appearance as a Wichita State Shocker to give the Shocks a 13-3 lead. 9.52 remaining in the third period. Wichita, it comes down at the 10-yard line. Witherspoon gathers it in. Trots up to his left. A lot of people out in front of him. He's got some good movement, but Maurice Foxworth comes up with the big stick across the 30-yard line to the 33. Kansas State will start there. Boy, that Witherspoon is a dangerous fellow. We talked earlier in the game, over 4,000 yards rushing in his high school career. They retired his jersey at Liberal, something that you don't see too much of in high school. That time he uh, had another good thing going, and it was lucky for Wichita State they were able to stop him. First and 10 for the Cats. 9.46 remaining in the third frame. Wichita State up by 10. Williams goes right to the pass, looking out on the right flat, has a man there, gets a good seal off block, and moving up the field is Ray Wilson. Ball is loose, and Wichita State has come up with it again inside the 50-yard line. What do you know about that? The fourth turnover registered by the Wildcats. Randall Cooper applied the stick, and the Shockers have come up with it. Chris Bats Young as well on the play, and the Shockers are playing opportunistic defensive football. And everything is going their way. Everything is going against Kansas State. Here they have a great play. They got a fortunate block. They got a guy inside, and here comes the ball out. Nice backside hit there. Nice, nice play by Chris Bats Young and a host of Wichita State Shockers, and the defense is giving the offense all sorts of opportunities. The fourth turnover by Kansas State, as we mentioned, and the Shockers again have the football. Heading into the sun and the win. Brian McDonald has Velasco Smith and Jose Wilson in the backfield. Kevin Pierce to the top, Brock Fewen on the bottom. Here's Velasco Smith cutting off to the right side. He's across the 35 to the 30 to 25. He breaks to the 20 to the 15, and he's ridden down there as the Shockers break to the 15-yard line. And take a look at that Wichita State bench. They are all over the place. They are sky high. When Brad Fleeman connected on that field goal, they went bananas. Everything is going the Shockers' way. We look on the replay, and again, you see the speed, the quickness, the explosiveness of Velasco Smith. He is going to make a big difference in this team this year. Velasco Smith showing some nifty moves, running from his right and his left. He's a juke and a jiver, and he got it all the way down to the 15-yard line before Barton Hundley finally rode him down and the Shockers are knocking on the door again first and 10 from the 15 they're on the near hash mark this time it's Eric Denson testing the middle east to the 10 yard line and beyond before driving down Smith on the game right now 11 carries 54 yards so he's having a pretty good day so far and that was uh, that would run right there would make a pretty good day for most people Denson takes it to the nine, where Brian McDonald will set his Shockers second and five. And who would have thought it from Manhattan? Ron Chismar's troops right now, leading 13 to three and threatening to add more to the count. Denson and Jose Wilson in the backfield behind Brian McDonald. Behind the big offensive line, McDonald calls his signals. They have been shoe there and uh, may have lost a chance to get able to keep both of his feet on. He might have gone into that end zone. We look at Brock Fewen in the end zone underneath the coverage, but the ball unable to be delivered as Brad Lambert stayed with, didn't stay with Fewen, and he and Pierce, both of them, open in the end zone. Wide open. As McDonald made the choice to run. Third and two for the first down. They're at the seventh. From the I formation, they'll try their luck. Strong right, they're in the slot that way. Denson's the second man through. He battles to the five, close to the first down, maybe a little shy. I think he's going to be a little short there. They need a good mark as Renneth Reed was the man that made the stop. If they can get this one into the end zone and get seven here, this will be big. Because as you look over at the Kansas State bench, they're all just, they're off it now, but they were just sitting down, just kind of lackadaisical about this whole situation. 
This is right now a Wichita State football game, and they are sky high. They need to get this one in. Here come the sticks, season long. Ron Chismar will opt for the field goal attempt from Brad Fleeman. He'll spot it down off the spot of Dave Armagas. And it's a 22 effort that is true. And Wichita State pushes the lead that much further to 16 to 3. 720 remaining in the third frame. And Brad Fleeman has proved to be an able substitute for the injured Sergio Lopez Chavarro. And a lot of pressure on a freshman coming in. He's now two for two. Brad Fleeman sends it high in the air again. And it's Witherspoon along the far sideline at the five, breaking to the 15. And he is downplayed right there by Larry Holmes, a reserve inside backer. And so Kansas State will be backed up to their old goal line, or actually at the 15-yard line, with 7-14 remaining in the third frame. Boy, that shocker defense was jumping up off the bench and running out onto the field to get ready almost before Witherspoon was down. These guys are fired up. It has been an impressive effort by the Wichita State defense to this point. The question, of course, remains, will they stay healthy through that fourth period? Will the numbers hold up? We'll find out. Randy Williams brings his club set. They're at the 16-yard line. Single back in motion. To the near side is Dick Warren. Pitch to the off man, breaking through to the 20, now to the 30, upfield to the 40-yard line, into the 45 is Ray Wilson, Kansas State's biggest offensive play of the ball game. On the stop for Wichita State was number 85, Kirk Allen. Chris Batsyong made a good play and uh, probably saved this from being a big, big gainer. We'll watch here as Ray Wilson makes the move outside. He's going to get down here along the tightrope. Batsyong comes in, just catches his foot, and that's going to send Wilson down to the ground. But not before he breaks it to the 43-yard line, a big gainer for the Cats of Kansas State. Now from the eye, Randy Williams with renewed enthusiasm brings his purple pride set. Second man through is Jordan, driving through across the 45 to the 47-yard line before Jim Mann leads a host of shockers on the stop. Clock ticking down to 6.39 in the third period. Shocks went five plays, 42 yards, before Brad Fleeman rooted a 22-yard field goal. Time of possession, 2.17. Mitch Morris now down on the field for the Shockers. The trainers come out onto the field. They're at the 46. They're on. Single back in the backfield. Coming in motion is Mark Wenzel. Straight drop back. Williams being rushed. Finally looks upfield and makes the play. On the hook point is Todd Elder, a big 6'3", 233-pound sophomore. And it's good for a first down as Kansas State now with their first concerted offensive drive of the ball game. Derek Westfield was in on the stop as we took a look at Randy Williams, perhaps his best throw of the afternoon. That time, uh, Kansas State caught Wichita State in kind of a cross pass rush that time. No one was able to get through. Williams had lots of time. First and 10 at the 43. Back again to pass as Williams pressured and the ball is down. The question now, is it a forward pass? They're gonna roll it a fumble. The Shockers are down on it and the Shockers have turned it over. Thanks. Hey, hey, the Shockers have come up with it. An awful lot of boos being heard in this crowd of 30,000 30, and rightfully so. I'm sure we'll see on the replay. So. It appeared to be a forward pass, but Wichita State will not look that gift horse in the mouth and will take their fifth turnover is Daryl Whitlaw moving up the field, eating up as much of the clock as you possibly can. It becomes a control ball game at this point, leading by 13. Time ticking away in the third period. Denson, or excuse me, Velasco Smith and Dwight Eaton in the backfield. This is Velasco Smith, and at 5'8", 180 pounds, he took a hit and just kept on ticking at the 50-yard line, running right over Matt Walterset on the play. Velasco Smith low to the ground. As you can see, 59 yards rushing in the ball game. He's averaging over five yards a carry. This guy's got that low center of gravity and he knocks you over at that point of impact. Picked up five on the play. Second and five for Wichita State just inside midfield. McDonald will throw the football. Deep, deep drop, who has plenty of time. Now delivers across the middle. He has Kevin Pierce to the 31-yard line. And the Shockers pick up a big, big first down and are on the move in Kansas State territory. Kevin Pierce from Brian McDonald. And again, we see McDonald drop back, take his time, and fire a perfect pass over the middle there. 
That's as good a pass play as we're going to see all day. He really just hit him right on the numbers that time. Good job by the receiver, Kevin Pierce, hauling that one in. His second catch, 30 yards now in the game. Kevin Pierce, at one time, played basketball for Gene Smithson's crew at Wichita State. Now checking his prowess on the football field. Shocks come set at the 31. They split the backfield. Velasco Smith and, Eric and Dwight Eaton quickly out in the flat to Brock Fewen. Jukes and jives. Gets to the 20. And it's good for a Shocker first down as Barden Hundley made the play. But the Shockers are moving on the short passing game. As we take another look at it, Brian McDonald with more and more confidence. Kansas State was coming with the blitz right there from the corners. But Brock Fewen picked it up quickly and made the play to the 20 with a good move. Hundley saved a touchdown. We'll take another look at, at uh, Fewen here. He's caught three balls today for 35 yards, so they're spreading it around. They haven't really uh, tested old Barton Hunley over there a couple times. This time he had to come over and make the play. Shockers again with another opportunity. McDonald hands off this time Velasco Smith. He's inside the 20 to the 18-yard line before he's finally knocked down on the play by David Wallace, who's been very busy in that inside backer spot. Keeping this drive going is very important to the Shockers. If they can get another field goal out of the freshman Brad Fleeman here, that would mean that Kansas State would have to score more than two touchdowns to get back into this ball game. But uh, of course, uh, Ron Chismar's group would like to put it in that purple end zone. Brian McDonald coming set. He's had a good day passing the football, 9 of 15. Second down and eight. Splits the backfield. Pierce to the near side. Drop play, Velasco Smith, and this time he's racked up quickly by Kevin Humphrey. Dropped him back to the 24-yard line, and it'll be a third down situation for Wichita State. Now they just smelled that one out that time. Of course, Humphrey's had a big day for the Wildcats. That time uh, they went with the draw, which has been very successful so far and has been the bread and butter for Velasco Smith so far in this game. That time it didn't go. So it's a third and 13 for Wichita State. They've been knocking on K-State's door pretty much throughout this second half of action. They put it through for a field goal. A couple of times from the foot of Brad Fleeman. This time McDonald across the middle just off the hands of his back flaring down the middle. Dwight Eaton couldn't come up with it. Pass is broken up and I would imagine we will again. This would give the Shocks a 19-3 lead. The kick is up. It looks good. And it is not. Off wide to the right. He hit it true, but he hit it wide. And in motion to the near side. That's Todd Moody. Gives it to the off man back. Jordan drives across to the 25, close to the 30-yard line, where Mark Duckins and Kirk Allen combine on the stop. It'll bring a second down situation. And again, we're going to have to take a look now at how Kansas State is going to attack this situation. They're sticking pretty much to their game plan. They're running it up the middle, occasionally some off-tackle stuff. We haven't seen too much of the option set in the option offense that they ran late in the second half, or rather in the second quarter. That seemed to work. Maybe we'll see some more of it. That was Greg Stram on the carry. Second down, four yards to go. Todd Moody in motion to the near side. Williams looking back to pass, and he finds the man open. Todd Elder found the seam of the zone, and it's good for a K-State first down to the shock or to the 39-yard line. Randall Cooper in on the stop. Again, we see Williams going with the quick drop back and the quick throw. He hasn't had a whole lot of time to throw today. The Wichita State defensive line has done a tremendous job of getting in there and pressuring him, but it's kind of tough to do anything about a quick play when it's executed that way. 8 of 16, so Williams has crawled his way back to 50%. Good for 73 yards through the air. Shockers can afford to give up the short stuff now. And, of course, the defense will be playing a little softer in the secondary. Williams will throw again. Lots of pressure coming from the secondary this time in the person of number 40, Derek Westfield, who is coming in hard. And the pass falls incomplete. There again, we see anytime they go to a deep drop back or anything where Randy Williams wants to have time to set up, he's not getting it. And he was really rushed that time and had to throw the ball away. Eight of 17 now is Randy Williams. And one way or the other, K-State's got some work to do on what is supposed to be a vaunted passing game approaching the Big 8 schedule. My oh my. It's like looking into the teeth of a dragon. Williams rolling off to the right. Short man. Ball's knocked away, and it's going to be at the 39. K-State from the shotgun, facing a third and 11. Double pass! 
Williams receives the pigskin, rolling straight back. Pressure coming from the near side, finds a man in the flat. He's going to be shy of the first down as a host of shockers get him on the near sideline, led by Daryl Whitley. So Greg Stram comes up short, and K-State will be forced to kick on a fourth and sixth situation. Or really? will they? Well, you never know. They've gone for it a couple times here. Now watch this play. Watch the hit coming up by number 30, Randall Cooper. Now take a look at him. Boom, right there. He really stuck him and knocked him back. And that saved the first down. Kirk Allen in on the play, and K-State will think better of it and now come in and kick the ball away. There was some doubt as to what the offense would do. But I think that's a confidence move. Earlier in the ball game, I think you would have seen Kansas State probably go for that first down. And now, down 13 points in the third, Jim Dickey opts not to do it. So the boot will come again. This time, it's high in the air off the foot of Troy Fonts. Coming down at the 15, it takes a Wichita State bounce back to the 13-yard line where the Shockers will, or the 17th. We are to the fourth period here in this ball game. McDonald sets his offense. Quick hitter, Dwight Eaton. Into the Kansas State backfield. And across the 25 to the 26-yard line were Barton Hundley and Jack Epps. Knock him down. And we're seeing a little uh, new wrinkle right now in the Shocker offense. That play ran a little bit to the outside attack, a little bit wider than the uh, part of the uh, field that they've been trying to run through. They've kept everything pretty much between the tackles. That went a little bit more outside, so the Shockers are trying to change things up a little bit. In the slot, Brock Fewen wide out, Kevin Pierce. Denson and Eaton in the backfield. McDonald. Checking off at the line of scrimmage. Rolling off to his left. Quickly in the flat. Fewen makes the catch along the near side. Good for a shocker first down. Brock Fewen out of Heston, Kansas to the 33-yard line. And the Shockers using the controlled running game and passing game right now are mixing it up as we take McDonald and a second look at McDonald rolling out and finding his receivers in the flat underneath the Kansas State scene. This is a safe play and it's a good play. You don't want to just sit back in this, sit on the ball at this point. We're still about 25 seconds from the fourth quarter. There is plenty of time. Remember, the Shockers will have the winds at their the wind at their back in the fourth and final period. First and 10 from the 33. McDonald turns, gives, Denson. Just shy of the 35, knocked down at the 34-yard line. As the gun sounds, ending the third period of play, we got ourselves a good one going at K-State. Wichita State leading the Cats of K-State. 16 on right. He's got Brock Buen high and wide. Kevin Pierce on the near side. Eaton and Denson in the backfield. Long count. Denson takes it deep, cutting off the right side. Good yardage, good for a first down. Ball stripped loose. K-State comes up with it. Dwayne Castile was the one that applied the hit. On the recovery is Don Cliggett. And so K-State finally gets a break off a good run by Eric Denson. He just didn't take care of the pigskin as he went to the floor. Kansas State ball hawking a little bit right now as we take a second look. A nice run by number 23. And a good play for Kansas State to begin this fourth quarter. There's all kind of time. And as we see here, a good looking run by Eric Denson, but he gets spun around and a great play there to strip the ball out and then cover it up. Not much you can do about that. So here we go. The second turnover registered against Wichita State. Kansas State facing almost a must score situation. First man through is Todd Moody. Breaks it up to the Shocker 41. Mitch Morris on the stop. Pick up of two on the play. As we've said, the Can uh, Wichita State defense, rather, has had a lot of time to rest. You see the yards passing in the game. Brian McDonald, 100 yards through the air right now. K-State, 78. Second and eight for the Hawks. Excuse me, the Cats. Stopping back, straight back. Randy Williams looking down the sideline on the near side. A nice catch by Todd Elder. And it's good for a first down to the 32-yard line. 
And that's a great play for Kansas State to run at this time. It's a fairly safe play, and you're not going to see it thrown and executed any better than this. It's very hard to defend when they do it this way. Williams shoots it right down. It's low. It's outside. And a perfect pattern there run by Todd Elder. So Kansas State on the move, trying to get back some points. They trail by 13 in the ball game. First and 10 from the 32. Williams sends the man in motion. That's Dick Warren. The shocks are coming with everything. Quick pitch on the near side. Moving up to the 25. Hey, Chris Badsyong and Kirk Allen finally wrestle the man down. Now it's Greg Strom driving across to the 20, and it's good for a first down as Kansas State is starting to assert themselves a little bit physically up front and are grinding it out to the 18. Momentum. We're seeing how important it is. No one on the Kansas State team has run any harder today than Greg Stram does on this carry. Watch him put his head down, pulls right through a tackle there, and he goes right through two more guys, and they still don't have him down. A little bit of mental edge, a turnover, a nice quick completion. Now they're moving. Kansas State moving the football. They're inside the 20 at the 18. Now we're going to take a timeout. The Cats want to talk about it a little bit as Randy Williams will go. And they give it to the first man through. Ray Wilson cuts it in across the 15 to the 13-yard line where Kirk Allen finally drove him down. But still a pickup of five yards on the play for Kansas State. 13 minutes, 18 seconds left in the football game. Plenty of time in just a 13-point deficit. Field goal won't do the Cats too much good right now. They need to get into the end zone. They need seven points. Like a shot of adrenaline, K-State seems to be playing with a little bit more enthusiasm right now, as well they should. They have the ball second and five at the 13. Williams calling the signals. Go right ahead with Strong. And inside the 10 to the eight-yard line, close to a Kansas State first down. He might have been stopped short by a host of Wichita State tacklers including Mitch Morris and Kirk Allen. Straight ahead play right there, and uh, as you can see, the line surge is now in favor of Kansas State. They moved the uh, shocker defensive front about two yards backwards that time before anybody had a chance to react. Big play for Wichita State. It's a third and one, and now we have a timeout called on the field. Kansas State third and long two. At the 10 yard line, they go to Strom up the middle and he surges forward for what appears to be a first down. The initial hit would have stopped him shy, but the second effort may have propelled the 6'3", 233 pound senior to the first down yardage. We'll have to wait and see. Mitchell Morris and Don Weather being on the stop. As you see the surge right there, Wichita State actually getting good penetration on the defensive front. This is going to be a close one. Uh, it looks to me as if they're going to be just an inch or two short. If they get it, it's going to be by the nose of the ball. Quick. They'll come with two tight ends. Everybody tight. A lot of meat on the hoof up there as Wichita State will try to answer the call. Kansas State needs a foot to keep the drive alive. Stram and Moody. Moody gets the call. He gets hit. I think that K-State is signaling they've got it. Wichita State is signaling uh-uh. But the second effort after he was hit may have given them the first down. Kirk Weidenkiller on the stop for Wichita State. The mark will be oh so important now for the Kansas State Wildcats. And they're going to bring in the chains. Looks as if Moody might have gotten it on his initial surge. He then pulled on to that football. Ball control. Boy, they really shut the door on him that time. Great play. What a tremendous defensive effort we are seeing here today by Wichita State. I know it's redundant, but it is as surprising as it is redundant. They try the middle with Jose Wilson. And the Shockers push forward across the 10-yard line out to the 12. So Kansas State yielding a bit right there as we take a look at Jose Wilson, who has been good in key situations today. We're down to crunch time now. We've still got a little under 12 minutes left to go in the game, but right now we're going to find out who the men are, and the big men are in the middle, the line. Watch in these plays coming up and see who handles who up front. Second down and a long five for Brian McDonald. Shockers are set in the eye. Jose Wilson and Velasco Smith. Velasco gets it deep in the second there in the backfield, and he is crunched at the 10-yard line. The officials go down. The ball goes down, and I believe we're going to have the ball whistled dead, and Wichita State's going to get it back. It was dead. 
which uh, Kansas State fans probably thinking the calls have gone against them pretty much this game. We only had one questionable call that coming uh, earlier in the half when uh, it appeared that Brian uh, Williams had not thrown the ball, but uh, they ruled that one a fumble. Let's take a look at this one right here. Brian McDonald giving it back to Velasco Smith deep in the backfield. He's racked up right there initially on the play by Tim McDonald. Then a surge of purple pushes them back, but the ball was clearly dead, and Wichita State regains possession. Shocks have gained 115 yards rushing. They would like to increase that total right now in a long third and sixth situation. Loss of one on the play officially. McDonald will pass the ball across the middle quickly to the tight end. This time it is a fumble, and Kansas State comes up with it. No, no, no. They're saying an incomplete pass. I don't think he had possession. He never took the step with it once he caught it. I'll tell you, K-State has not gotten an awful lot of calls, and that one will be interesting to take a look at again as the officials, all of them in unison, signifying an incomplete pass, and so Wichita State, what appeared to be a completion to Jack Owens, is nullified. Let's take a look and see if we can pick it up on the replay. Just dragging it across the middle. And that, my Ooh. friends, is a toss-up. That is a judgment call, and I'm afraid I was going to have to judge fumble right there because he's got it. He takes a step over, he turns, and then the ball comes out. That is a fumble. Boy, oh boy, Wichita State gets a break right there, or at least it appears to be. And David Armagas will boot it away again from his own end zone. You need a few breaks to upset. A nice kick here wouldn't hurt. Kick is... Spiraling to the 50, Wenzel takes it at the 48. And he is downed after four tough yards to the Wichita State 47. So the Shockers get a break, a good kick. And now they got a little room to operate defensively as his fifth kick from David Armagas goes 39. Randy Williams brings the Cats up. Running from the eye, rolls out to his left. He's got all sorts of time, looks down the field and completes it to Dick Warren, who across the 35, or excuse me, the 45, close to the 40-yard line to the 42. Maurice Foxworth made the stop for Wichita State. Dick Warren out of Wichita, Kansas. Mo Foxworth has played a great game. He's been all over the field, roaming around, making tackles. That was a big one there because he was the only guy in the area. 9.47, and it's ticking down for Kansas State. Second down, five yards to go for the cot for the cats second man through is stram john weatherby wraps him up as he picks up two more yards it'll be a third and three situation as we take a look at greg stram who has been the short yardage man for the cats today 6 3 233 a senior really good play there by don weatherby to fight off a block and wrap stram up Third down and three. Big play for Kansas State. Shock showing blitz, and here comes Bats Young. He's picked up, but now more pressure being applied, and Randy Williams throws it away. Jim Mann was coming hard, as was Chris Bats Young. And so the Shockers coming hard with the defensive stunts force a fourth down situation as we take Bats Young. Another look at Bats Young coming quickly, and then here's Jimmy Mann. And Randy Williams really has done a very good job of picking up the blitz today. Brian McDonald in that situation would be prone to roll away from something like that. Go back to the open side of the field, take his bearings and see what he can do. But Williams, it seems, when you get him forced in one direction, he's going to stay in that direction until you run him down or he throws it away like he did there. Here's a big fourth and three offering for Kansas State. Williams with one back goes to Stram. He finds the left side and he's going to come up with the first down, and the Shockers let him off the hook that time. They had a good initial defensive surge led by Jimmy Mann, but a second effort from Stram got the first down, and Kansas State keeps an important drive alive. And here's where intensity, again, I know we've talked about it a lot, but it is important now. You've got to make that tackle when you hit the guy, especially on a fourth down play like this. Here you see they have Stram wrapped up, and he just burrows his way through him, drives. He will not be denied the first which is good for K-State because it's 8.52 and counting down. Shadows now dominating the midsection of the field. Still Kansas State's bench drenched in sunshine. Approaching now the early evening hours. 
in a Kansas summer. Cats come set. Here's Stram on the left side again. A whole host of purple out there, and Stram boasts forward for a good six-yard pickup. Kirk Weidenkeller on the stop. Kansas State's smart play here. They're working the short side of the field, and they're working towards the sidelines, where, of course, they can stop the clock on the short rushing plays. But Wichita State is bending and not breaking on defense right now. It's a second and long four. Left hash mark. Williams has one back set. And he gives it to Stram. Off tackle left. He's going to pick up the first down. And he's bolting for more across the 25, inside the 23-yard line. Darrell Whitley finally muscled him out of bounds. But Kansas State is picking up yardage and stopping the clock on each play. Intelligent use of the running game. The Shocker defense has been there all afternoon. They need to regroup and get themselves up for one more. 8.37 and counting down. Kansas State with a first down situation. This time Williams looks to pass. Got a man wide open in the flat. Man to man out there. And he's finally knocked out of bounds at the 20 yard line. Nope, check that. They'll keep the clock rolling as Randall Cooper made the play on the near side. Boy, there's nothing uh, scarier for a corner out there than to be one on one with a talented, quick uh, receiver. And here is the situation here. Cooper has to eye this guy, try to make a move. And he does the best he can. Jay Wade on the reception, and, and it's good for five yards just inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. So Kansas State gaining a little consistency right now and moving the football. Quick pitch near side. Coming to the short side of the field and rung out of bounds is Ray Wilson by Daryl Whitley and other shocks, including Kirk Allen. But it's good for another pickup of four yards or so to the 21. This is very reminiscent of the Cats' last drive when they poked it up the middle, ran to the short side of the field, came back with a quick toss. But when it came down to uh, the tough stuff on that fourth down play, the Shockers were able to answer the call. We'll see what they're going to do here. We got third and about three. Ray Wilson is the lone setback. Flanker is Todd Moody. First man through, and it appears to be yet another first down for Kansas State. Is Moody is, excuse me, Ray Wilson on the stop was Mark Duckins. And a shocker is down, or at least slow to get up. That's Kirk Allen. He'll be replaced by Larry Holmes as he saunters to the sidelines. Another good effort out of Kirk Allen, who had a great ball game against Illinois State in the last game of the season at 84. He's played well today. It'd be hard to pick out a uh, outstanding player on defense today for the Shockers. There have been a bunch of them. Fourth and one, Wichita State facing another crucial defensive situation. More crucial, however, for the Cats on O. Williams gives to the first man through. That's Ray Wilson, and he bolts for the first down to the 10-yard line. Maurice Foxworth and Chris Batsyong made the stop on defense, but not before the Cats drive it to the 10, where they'll have a first and goal situation. Well, the Cats have uh, gone forward on fourth down four or five times in this game already. They're bound to pick up a few of them, and they got that one. When you don't stop that play at the line when you're packed in tight, it's not unusual to see a guy fall forward for another four or five. So Kansas State comes a-knocking once more. They've been down here the last couple of times they've had the football just inside the 10-yard line. Williams rolling to his left. Has a man open, but Mitch Key... Along the left-hand side, Mitchell Morris applying the defensive pressure, and he's finally run out of bounds by Chris Batsyong on the far side. Mitchell Morris, not Mitch Key, the hero of a year ago, of course. Derek Westfield also in on the play. Good defensive pressure from Mitchell Morris. Here again, we'll see uh, Randy Williams. I don't know if he's been disciplined or taught to stay in his... Uh in his uh, rollout and try to keep things going the way they were intended because he never seems to want to change direction or try to option his way out of a situation. So it's uh, the Wichita State's advantage in that once they get a track on him, they can usually run him out of bounds. Second down, goal to go from the 11. They actually lost a yard on the play. Moody goes motion left, rolling off to the right. Ball is knocked up in the air and picked off a 
the goal line by Chris Bats Young. The Shockers have gotten it on the sixth turnover of the ball game. Mitchell Morris applying the defensive pressure, knocked the ball off its trajectory, and Chris Bats Young, the big sophomore out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, comes up with the defensive play, and the Wichita State defense has answered the call on six turnover situations. Six turnovers, as you mentioned, four fumbles, two interceptions, the second coming here off the tip enough to come up with the big play. Quick opener, up the middle. They'll try to keep that clock rolling now. Dwight Eaton, the short yardage man, punches it for a couple of yards. So far, uh, I think Kansas State doesn't deserve to win this ball game because they've been in scoring land just too many times and they haven't come through with it. After the game, that's probably going to be Jim Dickey's alibi. They just didn't do it when they had to. Shockers need to maintain possession right here, grinding it out on the ground. McDonald calling the signals. Looking for someone to throw to. And it's Brock Buen, and it's good for a first down to the 11 yard line at their own 12. Second man through. Renneth Reed racks up. Eric Denson on the play. And here again, play selection very important you're deep in your own territory you can't afford to do anything even remotely risky that little pass out to the flat on the play previous to this one was indicated but uh, right now this is a tough call we got second and about 12 coming up Denson on the afternoon he has seen a lot of action he's toted the ball 20 times picked up 63 yards second down and 11 for Wichita State Eden and Denson in the backfield McDonald goes deep in the backfield and Denson is racked up quickly on the play by a whole host of Kansas State Wildcats. Troy Adams leading the defensive surge. Now we're beginning to see, I think, uh, a little bit of this uh, temperature and heat begin to take its toll. Some of the guys up front for Wichita State looking a little bit tired. They're a little bit slow getting up and off the block. Third down, 14 yards for Wichita State, but they've knocked another minute and a half or so off the clock. Brian McDonald is back to pass. Now he's rolling out, has all sorts of room, has time. Now just trying to run off some time of the clock. All sorts of Kansas State bodies flying around about the 11 yard line. He'll pick up a couple of yards and boots it. I'll tell you, he could have run for a first down right there. <laughs> Delivers it across the 50 to the 45. Wenzel picks it up there, has good running room across the 45, inside, close to the 40 of Wichita State. A 44-yard effort turned in by David Armagost, also out of Cape and Mount Carmel. And so Kansas State now must answer the call if they hope at all to win this ball game. And boy, I tell you right now, there is not much time left. 3.32 on the clock. Forget all that control, ball control, you games, but this is the official opener, and you're bound to see a few. We've already seen Nebraska fall today. Randy Williams with a last gasp chance. Sends Moody in motion. Now he's dropping back. He has Dick Warren wide open to the left. Instead, will go downfield. Has a man open on the near side. Moving it down is Moody. And knocked out of bounds at about the 16-yard lines by Kirk Weidenkiller. And Daryl Whitley, as we'll take another look at it. Moody was the man in motion, and Williams had all sorts of time back there to pick and choose who he wanted to throw for. He really did. He finally had a little time. Made a good pass, good pattern, and a good catch right there. Wichita State cannot afford to lay back. I think they were playing a little prevent right there, and it cost them. 324 remaining, so still plenty of time for all sorts of things to happen. Randy Williams has got his cats moving at the 16. Gives it to his one man back, trying the near side is Ray Wilson. He's knocked down hard on the play defensively by Wichita State. Sean Saturday on the play for the Shockers also. And now we have seven yards, Kansas State. They're at the 18, second man through is Moody. Hit hard once, hit hard twice. Kirk Allen and a bunch of guys wrestling him down. As the Shocks get tough inside that 20, they are very begrudging indeed. They're doing a good job right now. It looks as if they picked up the pace a little bit, but the pace of the clock keeps going. 2.40 now. 
left to go in the game. As we look at the replay, you can see the Wichita State defensive front see through and go in to make the stop. Look at Kirk Allen go uh, to that football. Boy, I'll tell you. He's just waiting on him, isn't he? Yeah, he's got a radar on down there. 